Although we still haven't gotten PCIe Express 5.0 devices in our hot little hands yet, believe it or not, the PCIe 6.0 specification has already been released. And as you may have guessed, it's insanely fast. At 126 gigabytes per second one way on an X16 link, it's twice as fast as 5.0, four times as fast as 4.0, which is fairly new on the market, and eight times faster than the 3.0 devices many of us idiots are currently using. Ugh! But how do they make it so fast? And more importantly, does it have real relevance for you, the home user, or is it just overkill? To find out, we spoke with Debendra Das Sharma, an Intel fellow in their data platforms group, and we'd like to thank him for lending his time and expertise. So unsurprisingly, PCI Express 6.0 is backwards compatible with all the previous generations of PCIe, but if you go all the way back to version 1.0, you could only get up to four gigabytes per second one way from an X16 slot. Now, we're pushing 32 times as much data through the same link. Older revisions of PCI Express got faster and faster because they increased their transmission frequencies, but it turns out you can only do this so much before the signal becomes super unstable. It's kind of similar to how a five gigahertz Wi-Fi connection is faster than a 2.4 gig link, but it's also not as stable at long distances. So instead, PCI 6 uses a technique called PAM4, which can actually carry two bits of data at the same time instead of just one. Unlike traditional signaling, where one voltage represented a zero and a second voltage represented a one, PAM4 uses four different voltages and each one corresponds to either 00, 01, 10, or 11, meaning twice as much data is sent per unit of time. However, shoving more stuff through the pipes is, just like in regular life, not the greatest idea. In this case, it increases the rate of errors. And even with the PCI special interest group adding a few nanoseconds of latency to reduce the error rate to about one bit per million, that's still a lot of potential errors when you consider how much data flows through a typical PCI Express link. However, a few bytes in each chunk of data that's sent are reserved for error checking and correction. If the receiving device sees that a packet is incorrect, it can ask for it again using just a few bytes of data. Because this error correcting scheme is quite lightweight, it only adds a very small amount of latency. So this way, PCI 6.0 can operate at very high speeds without constantly losing signal integrity. In fact, it's estimated that instead of an error rate of one bit in a million, PCI 6.0 can operate with only one unfixed error every billion, billion hours. So you'll probably never have to worry about it unless you're an elf from Middle Earth. <gasps> but Riley, hold on a minute. All this performance is fine and good, but my graphics card doesn't even saturate the PCI Express slot in my computer today. Why should I care about this? Well, one reason is that as we continue to ask for more and more out of our devices, having the fattest pipe possible <laughs> will ensure that we can do things like hit our SSDs with mega-sized downloads, stream 4K and 8K HDR video, and keep up with the ever-increasing demands video games put on our graphics cards all at the same time. But going beyond just your home PC, think of all the cloud services you utilize on a daily basis for applications from voice assistants to IoT devices to self-driving cars. Well, assuming you can afford one. All these gadgets need a high bandwidth interface that can process data with minimal latency. Think of an autonomous car that quickly has to get data from a camera to a CPU to a 5G modem, which then goes into a server somewhere that has to respond quickly to aid in hazard recognition and is also moving data around internally for machine learning. That's a lot of data. On both ends of that connection, PCI Express 6.0 could deliver enough speed to make the experience seamless and maybe even tell you about an icy road ahead before you end up in the ditch. And don't let your brain end up in the ditch either. Learn something new. Brilliant is a website and app that makes learning accessible and fun. Their approach is based on problem solving and active learning. It's about seeing concepts visually and interacting with them and then answering questions that get you to think. Their courses are laid out like a story and broken down into pieces so you can tackle them a little bit at a time. I don't know, sounds like school. Guys, there's no tests and no grades. Just pick a course based on what you're interested in and get started. If you make a mistake, it's no big deal. You're not gonna be sent to detention. Just check out the explanations to find out more. You can learn at your own pace and there's something for everybody. Whether you wanna brush up on the basics of algebra, learn programming, or learn about cutting edge topics like neural networks. There's even some advanced stuff like differential equations, if you're into that sort of thing. The first 200 people who head to brilliant.org slash techwiki will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So check it out at the link below. 
All right, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Check out our other videos. We got lots. Comment below with video suggestions so we can make even more. And don't forget to subscribe and follow so you can watch the aforementioned videos that we will continue to make.